Well, we have the blessing this morning of uh, welcoming some new members and also baptizing another covenant child. So Chris and Lindsay Hilgenberg and uh, James, if y'all will come up and if the elders will come join me at the front as well. Uh, This uh, young family has been with us now for several months. Many of you have gotten to know them. If you haven't yet, you definitely need to. They have a wonderful story of God's grace and the faith that he has brought uh, to them and the ways that he's worked in them, even bringing them to our congregation today. And so we are going to welcome them as members of the church and also baptize this young man. Beloved in the Lord Jesus Christ, we thank our God for the grace that was given you in that you have accepted God's promise of salvation and publicly confessed your faith in the Savior Jesus Christ. We rejoice that in God's gracious providence He's brought you to Himself and brought you now to us and given you a desire to unite with us as members of this congregation. We ask you to testify before us today to the faith that you profess by giving assent to the following questions. Do you believe the Bible, consisting of the Old and New Testaments, to be the Word of God and its doctrine of salvation to be the perfect and only true doctrine of salvation? Praise God. Do you believe in one living and true God in whom eternally there are three distinct persons, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, who are the same in being and equal in power and glory, and that Jesus Christ is God the Son come in the flesh? Praise God. Do you confess that because of your sinfulness you abhor and humble yourself before God, that you repent of your sin, and that you trust for salvation not in yourself, but in Jesus Christ alone? Praise God. Do you acknowledge Jesus Christ as your sovereign Lord? And do you promise that, in reliance on the grace of God, you will serve Him with all that is in you, forsake the world, resist the devil, put to death your sinful deeds and desires, and lead a godly life? Praise God. And finally, do you promise to participate faithfully in this church's worship and service, to submit in the Lord to its government, and to heed its discipline, even in case you should be found delinquent in doctrine or life? Praise God. Well, Jesus, of course, commanded that those who heard the gospel and believed were to be baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. He commanded His followers to be baptized as a sign and seal of God's promised grace and of their covenant relationship to Him. Baptism depicts the washing away of our sins, our new birth as participants in the new creation, and our union with Christ in His death and resurrection. Those who are baptized are visibly saved, just as Noah and his family were in the ark, which carried them through the floodwaters of judgment. Baptism is our journey through the Red Sea on dry ground, whereas unbelievers attempting to do so were drowned and lost. Baptism is a mark of identification in which God's name is placed upon us He now has visible authority over our lives, and throughout the rest of our lives, we are to remember who we are and whose we are and act like it. In other words, we are to remember and to always live in light of our baptism. And so to the congregation today, as solemn vows are made and baptism is administered, all of you who are baptized Christians will do well to think upon your own baptism. Christ has put His name and claim on you. He calls you to be repentant for your sins against God, to confess your faith openly, and to live a life of new obedience to God who has sealed His covenant with you by the blood of His own Son. Now we are baptizing a young man today, and so we acknowledge that young children may not understand the spiritual truths of the Scriptures, just as we said, we're not saved by information, but rather by the Spirit's work within His people. But if they are children of believers, they are to be baptized as those that God has placed in His covenant community. The Lord promised Abraham, I will be God to you and to your children. And He commanded that Abraham's male offspring be circumcised. In the New Testament, the Apostle Peter affirms that the promise of salvation and of God's Holy Spirit is for you and for your children and for all who are afar off, as many as the Lord our God will call. Likewise, Jesus embraced the children of believers and said that the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. And the Apostle Paul said that if even one parent is a Christian, then the children are holy. The same word used in the Bible and often translated saint. In other words, we do not baptize our children in order to make them Christians. We baptize them because that is what they are. They are members of Christ's body. They are members of the covenant. They are those upon whom Christ has placed His name and those who have sacred obligations to live in faith and obedience to Him. So Chris and Lindsay, let me ask you as James's parents, do you acknowledge that although our children are conceived and born in sin and therefore are subject to condemnation, they are holy in Christ by virtue of the covenant of grace and as children of the covenant are to be baptized? Praise God. 
Do you promise to teach diligently to James the principles of our holy Christian faith revealed in the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments and summarized in the confession of faith and catechisms of this church? Praise God. Do you promise to pray regularly with and for James and to set an example of piety and godliness before him? Praise God. And finally, do you promise to endeavor by all the means that God has appointed to bring James up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord, encouraging him to appropriate for himself the blessings and fulfill the obligations of the covenant? Praise God. Let's bow in prayer together. Gracious God and Father, we are thankful. We are thankful that you are our God and that you have made yourself known to us as a father, that you have sent the spirit of adoption into our hearts by which we cry out to you. We're thankful for this young family. Oh Lord, we're grateful that you have worked powerfully in their lives for many years, making them your own and drawing them now to this congregation to be members with us. We're thankful for James and we pray that as this young man is baptized, that you in placing your name visibly upon him would truly take ownership of his life in every way, that throughout his life, as he grows, as he learns, as he works, O oh God, that you would use him for your glory and the good of your people, that it might be evident to all that he is yours, even from the foundation of the world. Signify and seal these blessings in this baptism, we pray in Jesus' holy name. Amen. All right. You want to hang on to him? All right. James, you ready? I'm going to baptize you, okay? James Aaron Hilgenberg, I now baptize you in the name of the Father yep, and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. It's all right. Many of us come crying into the kingdom of God. That's okay. As James is baptized into Christ, he becomes a member of the visible church. And the congregation is to love and receive him as a member of Christ's body. For we were all baptized by one spirit into one body, and therefore we are members of one another. Christ claims this child as his own and calls you now to receive him in love and commitment. Therefore commit yourself before God to assist James and his parents in his Christian nurture by your godly example, through your prayers, and through encouragement in our most precious faith. Well, beloved in Christ Jesus, we welcome you to all the privileges of full communion with God's people. And we give thanks to God for this child that he's given you and for your expressed desire for him to know the Lord and to follow him all his days. Along with the great blessing of the gift of this child have come responsibilities that you've just acknowledged and to which you have solemnly committed yourselves. And I charge you to continue steadfastly in the confession of faith and in the commitments that you've made today before God and these witnesses humbly relying upon the grace of God and the diligent use of the means of grace, especially the Word of God, the sacraments, and prayer. Rest assured that if you confess Christ before men, He will confess you before His Father who is in heaven. Now may the God of all grace, who called you unto His eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little while, perfect, establish, and strengthen you. To Him be the glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Let's pray again. Gracious God and Father, we do rejoice to welcome those whom you have welcomed to yourself. We thank you that you have called us out of darkness, out of death, into your marvelous light. We thank you that you have called us not only to the fellowship of the triune God, but into fellowship as believers, as brothers and sisters. Help us now that we would welcome Chris and Lindsay and James and that we would love them well and encourage them well and that they also would encourage and strengthen us that together we might worship and work for your glory and the further expansion of your kingdom in this world. We pray in Jesus, our Savior's name. Amen. Normally I try to preach shorter on days that we have a baptism, but James had to wait a long time for that. So, so thankful, so thankful for that family.